Here is Ellen. I want to talk to you a little more about the revelation that the Holy Spirit has given me this year, actually already last year. And there are three really important aspects to the kingdom of God. I'm wearing a necklace that has a pearl in it. It's a real pearl, actually, from the islands. And my daughter and her husband brought it back for me. And the Bible talks about the pearl of great price, and that is the kingdom of God. And I do believe that we don't understand the kingdom correctly. I haven't, and all my life I've heard the kingdom of God and Jesus is the king. But do we understand what kingdom is? And not only kingdom, the way that we understand it here on earth, but the kingdom that God has put in his word for us to understand. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. And that means that we don't have anything lacking that the king has to offer. We're citizens of the kingdom, and that comes with huge benefits. Now, of course, his citizens are here on earth, and there is another kingdom that's raging, another kingdom and that is of uh, Satan and his cohorts, and they have been allowed to be on the earth. I do believe it's a time of testing, of schooling, of um, just making choices, uh, being submitted to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that means it's not a religion. And that's really important to understand what it is not before we can truly understand what it is. And we need to detach from that. It's not a faith. Faith is part of the kingdom, but it's not a faith. It's a citizenship. The king has a country, which is called the kingdom of heaven. And he has created earth to be like it. So a lot of times when you hear of people reporting that they were in the kingdom of heaven, it looks a lot like the earth except so much more beautiful and perfect. And we're still here on earth to, to actually implement the kingdom. We have to prepare the earth for the coming of the king. It says that he will come when all his enemies are his footstool. I believe it is the mandate of the church to spread the good news of the kingdom, not just the gospel, the gospel is part of it, the good news of the kingdom, and also to get this earth ready for the coming of the king when he comes to rule and reign with his church, which are the believers and the citizens, the ambassadors of the kingdom through the new birth of receiving Jesus as our Lord and Savior and King for all that he has done and he is the door and the door is just the beginning so there's a lot a lot a lot a lot of realms and rooms in the kingdom that we have not even explored yet we're just starting but the paradigm needs to be set the correct paradigm it is a government the kingdom of god is a rulership a government and since he is the creator, he has right to everything that he created. He is the owner of heaven and earth and all that is made and has been made. And as the absolute owner and king, he is also the absolute ruler and everything is going to be his way. It's not a democracy. It's not socialism. It's not a republic. It's not a... Uh, any other form of government it is an absolute monarchy and the interesting thing about that monarchy and I'm just going to touch on that today is that what kind of kingdom is it well the Bible tells us on several places that it is a kingdom of priests it's a royal priesthood and so I was asking the Lord how come that your kingdom or the church looks religious and it is because it is a kingdom of priests. And what do priests do? They sacrifice, they give offerings, they um, have good deeds. They actually make the place a better place on the earth. They bring people to the king and they make intercessions, intercessional prayers between man and God. Jesus is called our mediator. So we can go directly to the Father 
through Jesus, but it is a kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood. And the interesting thing on that is that it is according to the order of Melchizedek. Well, what does that mean? And I'm going to save that for another day because I think we want to break that into little pieces. And anybody that listens to me, be sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions, I will follow up and see um, if I can answer up the questions you have. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.